Today I'm going to show you how to make the best cafe style blueberry scones on the planet. These bake up so perfect, I can pretty much almost promise you you're going to want to make them all the time. I think you're going to be pretty amazed at how good these turn out. They're just the right level of sweetness and they have that gorgeous crisp exterior. Yeah, that one. And they're full of these rich, buttery, flaky layers, which I'm gonna show you how to get. If you're tired of your scones turning out like dry bread or biscuits, well, keep watching because these are actually pretty easy to make. We're gonna start out with an ordinary old cake pan. It doesn't have to be a nice one. And we're gonna line it with plastic. And you wanna make sure that you have some good overhang on the sides. I'm gonna set that aside for now and in a large bowl combine some all-purpose flour, sugar, baking powder, baking soda, some salt, and some cinnamon, which is a very important ingredient you don't want to leave out. I'm going to whisk that together really well, and now I'm going to add 125 grams of butter. And this does not need to be chilled. I know a lot of people like to chill their butter and grate it in with a box grater, and that method works really well. But having made possibly thousands of scones by now, I've found cutting it in with your fingers gets you a nicer scone. You want to try and form these little flat sheets of butter, and they're going to live between the layers and give you a nice puffy scone. You don't want to cut the butter in too much so it all disappears on you. Then your scones are going to have a very cakey texture, and that's not what we're going for here. It should look like very coarse oats, and if you see a few pea-sized chunks of butter here or there, that's even better. Now in a small bowl, I'm going to whisk an egg, and I'm going to beat it quite well. And now I'm going to add some heavy cream and some vanilla. And by the way, if you're looking for the complete recipe with all the measurements, it is now up on the blog. I've linked it down in the description. Now before I add this to the dry ingredients, I'm gonna stir in the blueberries. And if you're using frozen like I am, just be sure to coat them really well with the flour mixture. Otherwise they can freeze together and that's super annoying. So now you add in the cream mixture, and you wanna stir this until it just comes together. It's gonna to feel too dry at first, but just keep mixing it and give it a chance. The dough should be as dry and crumbly as you can get away with without it falling apart. What you don't wanna see is huge pockets of powdery flour. If you see any of those, then add in a splash or two of cream. You really shouldn't have to though. Now you wanna get in there with your hands and start patting this into a kinda shaggy dough. As soon as it forms together, you want to now cut it in half right in the bowl and then you want to scoop up one half and stack it over the other. It's going to feel kind of awkward, but the good news is you've just completed the most difficult part of the whole recipe. And now you want to repeat this cutting and stacking another five times for a total of six layers. And you're already going to notice on the second one that the dough is going to be much easier to handle. You can do this entire process right in the bowl, but it might be easier to work on a board. So I'm just going to continue this process of patting it down, cutting it in half, and stacking it. Every time you do this, the dough will come together more and more. Good secret to know, but a lot of scone recipes don't call for this step. And by the way, if you're still watching this far into the video, I'm gonna guess you probably like what you're seeing. If that's the case, then please let me know by hitting that like button. And if you really wanna make my day, please share this video with all your friends that you think might like it. All these little things help out the channel so much and I always really appreciate it. So it looks like our scone dough is now ready to go and you can see how gorgeous it is with all those lovely layers. And those chunks of butter in there are gonna steam in the oven to give the scones a really nice lift. So now we're gonna press this dough evenly into that plastic lined cake pan we made earlier. And you can use the overhang to keep your hand clean while you do this. Isn't that a handy trick? Now a super important step, we have to chill this really well. I like to stick it in the freezer for at least an hour. It's very important that the dough is very cold when we bake it. So here we are an hour later, this has been in the freezer. Now we're gonna take advantage of that plastic overhang again and use it to pull this giant scone out of the pan. And right now might be a good time to preheat your oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. And now I'm gonna cut this into eight equal wedges. Now say you wanted to make like 16 mini scones. I would take this and form it into two discs and then cut each one of those into eight. So now we're gonna transfer these onto our parchment lined baking sheet. And one step I never like to leave out is this nice little healthy sprinkling of turbinado sugar on top. That's gonna to add a real nice, sweet, crunchy touch to it. 
Now we're gonna fire these into the oven, and this is what they look like when they're ready. Your kitchen's gonna smell ridiculous right now. Oh yes, these scones are baked in true cafe style. And the really great thing to know, I'm gonna give you a little secret here. You can freeze these scones individually in their raw form. So you can keep them in your freezer and literally have freshly baked scones anytime you want. Yay! Okay, enough with the chatter. We've worked hard, it's time to eat. My favorite part of the video. I'm always in awe at how good these turn out and they weren't even hard to make at all. You saw. And I wish I could have sent some of these to the queen because I think she really would have liked them. And I'm pretty sure you're gonna like them too. So go bake yourself up a batch, grab yourself some butter, and experience a little taste of heaven because I think you deserve it.